In this video, we're going to take a look at sketch modification. Here in the sketch modification IPT from our working files directory, I'm going to activate our sketch one. Here I have some very basic geometry. It's a fully constrained sketch, so it's been changed to a different color. And what I'm going to do is look at some of these modify tools up here on the modify panel. I'm going to begin with the copy command where I select geometry. I can right click and say continue or go up here and choose base point to continue through the command. I'll choose my base point for copying and then place a few copies of this down. Now this copy is a little different than the patterning tools because I copied it in a very irregular pattern. However, each item here is fully unique to itself. However, it does have similar types of constraints applied to it. They behave very similar to each other. Next, I'll look at the move command. Here I'll highlight the geometry. Again, right click and choose continue. It moves over to the base point selection of the command and pick a base point and displace it to another point. Now I don't use the move command all that much inside of Inventor, primarily because I can generally just change dimensions and it does the moving for me. For instance, if I were to change this from 15 to 20 or 17 to 15, that does a pretty good job of moving things for me. Where I tend to use the move command more is when I have a point of reference, maybe from another part inside of an assembly and I wanna move this geometry onto that point. As a simple example, I'll just grab the point command from our create panel and just generate a point right here. Let's say this point is representative of some other point inside of an assembly, and I don't know what the dimensional change is from this point to this point. Well, that is a good case for the move command. So again, I'll move this again from this location to this point. We also have a rotate command in here where we can highlight our geometry, choose a point of rotation, and you will start getting messages like these letting you know that the geometry has some constraints on it. In this case, it actually had a horizontal constraint on it. And in order to actually do the rotation, it's gonna have to break that knowledge. So I'll say yes, go ahead and break that constraint, and I will rotate this up. Now this actually has a little bit of looseness to it that the other shapes did not, because it had to break some of those constraints. And I would have to go back and reassign some geometric rules to this newly rotated shape. I'll just leave it as that for right now. Next up, I'll look at the scale command. The scale command is a great little tool to take a very complex shape and scale it up by, let's say, 25% or scale it down by 10% rather than having to go through and change all the values. So here I'll highlight this geometry for scaling. Choose this base point for the scale. I have dimensions that will be relaxed. Yes, I approve that. And then I can either type in my scale factor in the box in the dialog or simply click somewhere representative of the scale that I want. So some of these tools that we've seen so far, such as move and scale, even rotate, don't get used nearly as often here as they would in a 2D vector-based software like AutoCAD. Here inside of Inventor, we rely more on the dimensions and the constraints and changing them to adjust our geometry. But there are a few cases where these do come in handy. We also have the stretch command here where we can do a crossing window on our geometry. And then we can stretch the geometry, getting dimensions relaxed and geometry constraints removed as well. I also have an offset command. And here when I choose geometry to offset, I can choose the entire loop of geometry, or I can right click and turn off loop select to get one or two pieces of geometry at a time. I also have another option there called Constrained Offset. This will maintain a similar spacing all the way around my offset. If I turn this off, I can have different offset values for different segments that I had used with the command. So for now, I'll keep Loop Select and Constrained Offset on. I'll select this loop and offset it out. Now when I move one of these segments, you can see the entire offset geometry moves with it. If I were to try to apply a dimension between these, it maintains that dimension all the way around. 
So here it does not need a dimension and actually tells me not to put one in. Over here, when I do an offset, and I turn off the constrained offset. So I still have loop select turned on. Here I'll offset this out. Then apply a dimension between here of two. And see how that has a different value all the way around. So that's what the constrained offset does. If I do offset again and turn off loop select, now I can choose one or two lines, right click and choose continue to offset just those two lines and not the entire profile. Next up, we'll take a look at the split command. So let's say I want to split these two arcs. Maybe for my sketching purposes, I don't want to have the complete arc but maybe I just want to have two partial ones. There could be reasons for this where you start to break up profiles. So I'm going to choose split. I will hover on the line that I would like to split, which in this case is actually the arc. I want to split that. I will then see a red X appear where the split will take place. While still inside the split command, I will also split this arc. Now you can see afterwards, I have two broken pieces there for each side. I have four unique arc segments. Next up, we'll look at trim and extend. When I choose the extend command, I can extend a line to the next available reference that it has. In this case, they're extending to this far edge over here and to this edge right here. If I click it again, it'll go further up on the extension. If I choose trim, that'll choose my geometry to trim away and it trims it back. You can actually trim something into non-existence. So you don't have to erase it, you can actually just trim it until it's gone. And it keeps trimming itself back to the next available reference, which sometimes is outside of your sight line. So this has been a look at sketch modification. Some of the commands we saw in here will be utilized a little bit more often than others. For instance, the copy, the offset, the trim command, the split tool are probably the more commonly used items here with working with inventor two-dimensional sketches, whereas the rotate or extend, stretch, and scale are used a little less often.